or whatever raccoons are called. Trash squirrels. You can't call raccoons coons. That's racist. I didn't say that. Jeez, what's wrong with you? Raccoons. All right, let's go and view this crap on the watch page. So it's just what, like a it's just FAQ? Nah, just hanging out. What's up? Man, there's lots of people in here already. Wow. Hopefully the audio, I'm gonna touch the mic guys, I apologize now. Okay, hopefully the audio and stuff is okay. We literally like impromptu set this up last second. Uh, I think the audio is good, because I was having problems when I was doing the, the WAN show with Linus. But uh, yeah, what's up guys? So it is Intel launch day today. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm pulling up Twitter and all that. So, okay, funny story. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this already because of Paul's uh, vlog. So Intel just like completely dropped the ball on the actual availability of these CPUs. Now, I got a text from my wife that my CPU actually arrived about 20 minutes ago at the house. Problem is I'm here at the studio. Yeah. So obviously the reviews on my end are not going to hit the embargo, which was four hours ago. Uh -oh. So Linus already put one up apparently. So, I don't know. I just want to talk about a few things here. Uh, oh, actually, go get the, go get the two, X299 Strix box. I wanted to open that up, grab a knife too. So, I just wanted to do a little bit of a Q&A with you guys. If the chat slows down at all, I guess it never will. Delay the audio. We guess the audio and the camera are coming through as the same feed. I can't delay it. Well, let me see. Out of sync audio. Well, guess what? I can't do shit about it. I can't even hear any of the audio here. Because I turned the main volume down. Oh. Hold on, I wanna hear how, how far out of sync it is. Get your hands off. Uh, my volume's right here, right? Yeah. Whoa. I, okay, we've got it playing. Oh, I bet you it's playing over there. Uh, Hold on. All right, Nick doesn't know what he's doing. Hold on, guys. I knew, I should have known better. He ran over to the computer and was like, and what do I do? <laughs> My bad. I don't work to things. Think so? Yes. Huh? Yes. Alright. So I learned something just now. When you have uh, when you have the whatchamacallit open, because I had the color corrector going, because remember we're shooting on this is an FS5 right here, and it does not come out of the camera color graded. That's why the color looks kind of weird. Um, so we had to grade it over there on the stream machine. The problem is that when I had the grading window open, the audio was playing too. And uh, I had that machine muted, so we can't hear it. Gotcha. So that should be better. Everyone says your fly is open. Your fly, oh. oh, my fly <laughs> is open. Wow. <laughs> That's worth it. I had to start off my knees on the right foot. Please meme that. I expect oh there to be tweets on that. <laughs> Jay, your crack is open. At least my, my, what, my uh, we'll just say my expletive is hanging out. <laughs> if I don't see any pictures yet on Twitter, I'm gonna be disappointed. You guys are usually pretty fast at that. Nick too um, sexy. <laughs> J fly is open. Desynced. Are we better now? Audio desynced again? Uh, stop. Okay. I don't want you touching things anymore. <laughs> Jay, your crack is open. At least my, my, my uh, we'll just say my expletive down hanging out. And I don't understand why it's out of sync, honestly, because the audio and the video are coming through the HDMI cable together. Yeah. Audio, not, still not, okay. Some people are saying synced, some people are saying out of sync. Let me refresh the stream. Let's, this is just like tech talk, but only with better shit. 
<laughs> better shit? Like it looks better than TikTok did, <laughs> okay. but it still has the same quality of TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, it's playing twice. You notice that? Okay, you entertain them. Okay. You keep them entertained <laughs> while I go over there. Look, guys, my fly is back up. See? Good. <laughs> okay. So, how do I keep you guys entertained? Do I just like, stare at the camera? <laughs> do I? Or I can't have a staring contest. I can move this box here. You guys can take a look at it. But Jay's going to unbox this. I don't get to unbox it. I can look at it, though. Oh wait, there's a Velcro door. We can take a peek. Why don't you look at that? Yeah. Do you have a program open that's like... Check the volume mixer. Pick your nose. Uh, I won't pick it, but you know. Uh, like that? There was something open? No. Oh. Yeah, but it's echoey. Okay, hold on. There was something open. There was something open. They're saying sync was good. Wait. Yeah, I'll have to wait till after the clap, because I could hear it playing twice. No, it's still doing a loop. What happened? Things happened. Blame Elgato. They say, or Jay says to blame the Elgato. So we're gonna blame the Elgato. It's not playing twice on the stream, so ignore it. Fix. We're good. We're good. There you go. Wait a minute. Do we have... No, it's still doing a loop. I know what's happening here. Hold on. What happened? Things happened. It's playing here too. Right? Yes, it's playing oh. here too. I fix? <laughs> did you fix? I fixed! We did something! Yeah! <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> 24 hours later. It might not have ever actually been... An audio like, problem. An audio problem. <laughs> just we had two browsers. Movie. We had two tabs <laughs> open with it playing twice. <laughs> GG. Okay. Anyway. Um, hi. This hi. Is, this is like the first actual attempt at a professional stream. With me? No, not with you. Just oh. since, I mean, because uh, the other streams I did up there were just webcam sitting at the desk, right? Yeah. But well, here I am trying to do this with like, should we take a picture of what this looks like and put it up on Twitter real quick? Yeah. You, you I mean, this it. is like ridiculously overkill, like not even necessary. But... We like doing unnecessary overkilly things here. Pick up the lip. What? Nope. Wait. There. What did it say? It's working now, right? It better be working. It's still slightly out of sync, though. We can't fix that. But here I am trying to do this with, like, should we take a picture of what this looks like and put it up on Twitter real quick? I mean, this is, like, you can boom my again, cramp. Yeah, keep it there. Hold on, I, I, this is bugging me now. The audio is about 200, maybe 150 milliseconds before the video, mm -hmm. which I still don't understand considering they're coming across in the same stream. Like, the audio and the video are going through the HDMI cable yeah. to the Elgato capture card. OBS is capturing what the, the Elgato, because the Elgato turns into a video display device. Okay. So. OBS is somehow like processing the audio and the video differently. 
Is it because we're set that to, what, 30 frames? So that one's recording at 60? No. Oh, okay. They're both at 30. I turned off 60 on that, but that wouldn't matter. They should be the same hertz rating. Just do, 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 see, he's saying just do a 200 second, millisecond delay, but they're coming across as two different stream, or the same stream, so let me see if I can do that. I'm curious now. Once we, curiousness. once we figure the formula, we just have to like screenshot everything so we can remember the settings. <laughs> First attempt at professional stream, and we're working out the bugs, but that's okay. That's why we do this. <laughs> mic is in frame. Yes, we know the mic is in frame. We, we put it there on purpose to know you guys. Right, see, that's not going to work. Because the audio, the audio comes across in the video capture device, which only, that's not work. Mm. See, the video capture device and the audio device are the same. Yeah. They're, they're just one stream. I can't, I can't separate them. Uh. Does that make sense? It's kind of funny because this worked when Gary and I used it at the house when we did our drone stream. <laughs> now when I'm thinking, uh, yeah. I do a 200 millisecond like this. Let me see. I have horrible ideas. You do? Yeah. Well, I thought about can you do like an XLR to a mic jack adapter and just have the mic go straight through that, like with the. the yeah, app. but then it's even farther off because the Elgato. The Elgato is, um, like, the problem is the Elgato is constantly, like, changing how much of a delay it is. Sometimes it's a second, sometimes it's a half second. Uh, so it'll eventually get out of sync anyway. Gotcha. Hi to the coconut monkey. Oh, hi. Hi, guys. So entertain those guys while I play around. Ryzen. Use a different program. Slow mode for Chaz off. This isn't Twitch, but is there a slow mode on here? I don't know. Okay. It's okay now. It work. Thick laptops. Yeah, this is a thick laptop. <laughs> it is a thick laptop. Oh, thick. Thick. I said fake laptop. No, I said thick. T H I C. We need the thick laptop so that we look normal size. <laughs> to make our scale look normal. I get it. It's working. It's fine. It's fixed. Everyone say it's perfect now. No, all it really. Yeah. How can that be? It's good, Lala, la, what's up? Just, I'm pretty sure they're just saying it's good so that we'll just continue on. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Look, it's fixed. It's fine. Get on with it. Okay. It worked. Here's what I did. I added a 200 millisecond delay okay. to the video stream. But the video stream and the audio stream are together. So unless it's like splitting out the audio when I go into the audio mixer, mm -hmm. I think we're good now. So 200 millisecond delay, we're good. We're only 23 minutes late. That's okay, <laughs> I said 10 o'clock-ish. Ish, yeah, that's why you have to add the ish. It's a safety feature for both you and the viewer. Turn it off and on again? Okay, so um, let's check Twitter. I want us, there's gotta be open fly pictures. I'm totally gonna be disappointed if there's not. Please. Get a smaller laptop. There it is. Oh look, there's a trouser snake coming out. <laughs> well played. <laughs> well played. That was UZP Customs. <laughs> Jay just flashing 2200 viewers from his wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> the audio lag come from the decoding, re-encoding when using some capture. A few milliseconds difference can create this. I understand how. My question, my point is that when they're coming across in the same stream, because what's happening is the Elgato it's, a it's, it's splitting the video and the oh, audio, okay. but it but it sends it to OBS in a single stream, so it's not like OBS sees them independently. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We can talk now. Today is X299 launch day, and I don't think anyone's surprised about that because the 19th was the embargo. The only problem is Intel didn't actually send CPUs until today. Until no, they sent them Friday. Oh, okay. They arrived today. Well, how did Linus get his? Well, Linus was fortunate enough to be able to go to the June 6th uh, workshop that mm. ASUS hosted, uh, which was a it was a it was a 
just an Intel workshop. We get to be hands-on with the stuff, talk to the Intel engineers, get your questions answered. And because we had just gotten back from Computex, and we had work to do. I wasn't gonna get on another plane and go back to San Francisco. So the, those that went were handed a CPU in person. Now, to be fair to Intel, they did tell me like, you really should try and go, we will be handing out CPUs there. Yeah. And my answer to that was, I can't go. You had your birthday. You're gonna send them to us, right? And they're like, yes, eventually. <laughs> oh, that was a catch. Yeah, so it was one of those. But anyway, I'll move this over. As you guys could probably expect, what did I just unplug? I just unplugged something. No, you just moved the power strip. I'm kicking all the cables. Okay. As you guys would expect, though, motherboard started arriving a couple weeks ago. Got a week and a half ago. Yeah. And I'm, I, I was like, that's, that's cool. But uh, not like there's anything I can put in there. We have the MSI board here, too, don't we? Yeah, we do. Want to grab Love that, that? too? Okay. Yeah. This board right here, I think I'm going to try out first. I really like the aesthetics of it. It's the Prime X299 Deluxe from Asus. Asus always seems to launch their deluxe line first before the, the ROG stuff. ROG stuff always seems to come later. I would like to check out the new Rampage, that's for sure. I like the antennas on that one. This one clearly is straight from Taiwan. <laughs> Open that somewhere where my address isn't going to be like all up in full view. <sighs> um, also, I do think it's important to point out there are no sponsors for this stream, so these are not sponsored product placements or anything like that. This is just... I literally had nothing to put up on launch day, so I figured we'd talk about it. There's always the big question too, especially right now, X299 or Threadripper? Now the answer to that still is Threadripper still needs to be seen. We still need to get Threadripper in our hands, obviously. Um, push the video, wait, what? Push the video of a TV up. What are you talking about here? I'm curious. Jay, push the video to a TV off screen that you can use like a teleprompter, clean or set. We like our set the way it is, and I actually have a teleprompter, but we just don't use it. And it's not a TV either. We don't use... Oh, he's talking about over here? Maybe this? I don't know. I don't know. How do you open this box? Uh, if you guys have been following my channel long enough, you know I'm really bad at unboxings. Like, I don't know how to open things. Seriously. Do you need help? I There's no help. flap. There's no flappy flap. Like, I think you're supposed to open it right here. Ow. You do it. Okay. Ooh. What are you saying? Ooh, you've already seen it. This is the replacement. I he know. does this. We get something in and he goes, Ooh! Ooh it's like, he's never carbon. seen it. I was a big fan of those boards. It's I'm the sorry. second one we've received. Remember, the first one's bad. They were like, don't use it. It might blow up your shit. <laughs> So, yeah. I think you've seen it. I didn't see that side. The first you have one. seen it. It's on my dining room table at home. Okay, then I have seen it. Exactly. Giving you that look right now. Um, yeah, so we have an X299 Gaming Pro Carbon, and then we have the Deluxe. I think I'm going to try out the Deluxe first, though. This is their little, like, it's like, they call it a one sheet. Basically, it's just a rundown of features. In terms of aesthetics though, I think that the Deluxe is gonna win, in my opinion. Okay, so let's talk about this. I started to mention a second ago, Threadripper versus X299. It should go without saying, we gotta get our hands on both before we can really determine any sort of clear winner. But my disappointments with Intel are still very, very strong. strong. I think the disappointments with Intel are strong amongst everybody, especially the KB Lake X CPUs, which are just like literally the stupidest concept ever. Why you would take a mainstream CPU and plop it onto an X299 board and disable so many features, which would be beneficial if they just left it on mainstream is absolutely asinine and no reason for that to even exist. Um, so that's a pro carbon board. What do you guys think of that? And here is- It's very black and carbony. The Prime X299 Deluxe. Are these both EATX? Usually the, they're, EAT, this is like, yeah, it's just standard ATX. That's cool. This is heavier than that one. I expected this one to be heavier. I expected that one to be lighter. No, it's heavier. Hmm? It's heavier. Sure. Yeah, that is heavier. Yeah, which is kind of strange. Now, I don't know if the carbon fiber on here is a real carbon fiber. Let's see. It doesn't really look like it. That just looks like plastic carbon fiber-ish. It's carbon fiber-esque, yes. is what we'll call it. 
Um, okay, so X299 versus Threadripper 2, a lot of people asking. I'm gonna be doing a video actually at the end of this stream about why I haven't been using my 1800X system because unfortunately the internet being the internet the way it is, everyone likes to form their own conclusions rather than actually going to the source to ask these questions. And so I think it's something that needs to be said um, because we're still kind of, we still have like temporary setups here for our, our, our PC situations. Like you're, you don't even have a working desktop right now. No. <laughs> and uh, my desktop was something that was, I just wanted to see what that Cougar case was like. And I just ended up throwing all of my X99 junk in there. I say junk, but my X99 stuff in there. And uh, I just kept it together. It's got one, one terabyte SSD in there and that's it. I've been working off of that. One terabyte and it's about full, which really sucks. We, we should get some hard drives because I found a great deal on terabytes. Yeah. So, hey, this is like really stabby. Like I keep stabbing myself. They're really sharp, sharp sides. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I got to handle this board and I'm being stabbed. So there's the car Pro Carbon and that's the Deluxe. Now the Deluxe is pretty neat because I, I like the way that they implemented the RGB on this. Now RGB, right? I think, I think we're kind of reaching the end of the RGB craze where companies are realizing like, okay, we don't have to make these crazy ass, super bright and in your face wow. flamboyant systems. They just now are starting to kind of use these subtle accents now. So, so as you can see, yeah. right, you can see by the box, hold up the motherboard. This is RGB right here and then under here and that's it. And it looks like it's a, like a strip so you can kind of get some color fading effect in there. Um, something else that's also important to know. And it's a mirrored finish too. So like when it's off, it looks mirrored. Yeah, it's a reflective, yeah. kind of a mirrored finish. They're both wireless, so that's nice to see. Um, let's see, the Pro Carbon has four PCI Express ports. Um, well, it looks like we've got at least, we'll look at the back. We've got two 16X, two 8X, and a two 2X, or maybe four X, I'm sorry, two 4X. So that's not bad in terms of connectivity. The problem with like the Z270 boards, in my opinion, was when NVIDIA had decided we're no longer going to officially support three and four way SLI, a lot of, this, a lot of these motherboard, motherboard manufacturers started saving money by putting less PCI Express expansion slots mm. on their motherboards because they just figured like, well, we don't need as many now. There's not as many GPUs that can go into motherboard. So you started seeing motherboards with only like two PCI Express 16X, no 8X, and maybe a couple of 4X like these guys. The problem with that was um, people still use a lot of expansion cards for things like RAID controllers, sound cards, capture cards, and it dramatically affected what you could actually install in it. Because as you can see right here, right, this is overlapped by a GPU. Mm -hmm. So if we put a GPU in here. You can't use that. You can't use that. Like the, this is not usable at all if you're using a dual slot GPU in this top slot. But you could still, you could still fit the M.2 at least. This one doesn't look like it has an M.2. Of course I do. They, I think this one has an adapter though. Oh, okay. Like this one's got two M.2s that lay flat right here. I believe one of these might be stacked. I don't have a screwdriver to open that. I believe there's a stacked one here. Cause they were like touting about like, you could fit two on top of each other. And I'm like, but why would you want to stack the heat? Anyway, uh, there's at least two on the board on this one. Oh. But I believe this one also has an, an expansion slot to put them. Um, check inside the motherboard box and the accessories. I still prefer to use M.2 and a PCI Express card if I can. Oh, this one right here, it stands straight up. Uh, and then it's got a bracket that screws down right there. So there's one right there. Because Asus is like pretty big on connectivity. So I would be shocked if they only did one. Yeah, let me see that. That's the fan expansion card. So Asus includes usually these fan expansion headers. So you get an extra one, two, three, four PWM controlled fan headers, which are powered by Molex and it has this plug that will connect oh, to the motherboard. They give you a Thunderbolt 3. Um, that's cool. So included with the Deluxe, it's Thunderbolt 3 interface card. It's also a USB 3.1 type A and a mini display port in. Huh, so this can be like a capture card. Neat. Then display port, or uh, mini display port in is nice. So again, this would end up going in one of, oh, these are antennas. Yeah, so it ends up going in like one of these slots like this. But see, this this can't even go in that, so it has to go into one of these. So I believe um, that is actually 2X, but yep. 
That's cool. And... Smoke weed every day. I feel sorry for your brain. I smoke mid. Only when I play CSGO though. Oh, I get it. Smoke mid. Smoke mid every day. Yeah. What else comes in there? Apart from the antennas, you get like the SLI. You get an ROG SLI bridge, but it's still like not a fancy thing. It's just like bare bones. It's a three-way bridge. Wait a minute. Is it? Ooh. Why are they including a three-way bridge? They want you to go. I, I guess it's for those folks who just still want to do three-way benchmarking, because that's about all that it'll work with. Um. Yeah, that's the stand for the M.2 okay. like I was telling you right here. So it looks like it's only got one M.2 slot on Anything on the back? Here's a two-way bridge. Nope, nothing on the back. Cables, I don't... Intel is a joke. Who agrees? You know what? The internet is so quick to, like... Jump. To just beat anyone up for any reason. Thunderbolt cable. Right, that's the display port Thunderbolt cable there. And then the rest are all, like, your cool. starter cables. Well, that's nifty. What goes in here? That was the bridge. No, oh, this was the bridge. This. Oh, the fan extender. All right, let's see what comes in the MSI. I'm gonna be doing more motherboard like overviews. I don't know, are you guys interested in the motherboard overview stuff like at all? Because I feel like I wanna show it powered on and show the BIOS and stuff. Um, I mean, that's, that's my personal opinion on the matter. I like seeing it. This one's scratched. I think someone scratched it when they were like testing it. Because these boards were hand tested before it's being sent. Oh. Which is kind of nice. But yeah, it's scratched right there. Them sent the bitches. Put it back in the box. Alright, let's see what comes with the MSI. I'm sitting on top of an anti static bag. Oh my god, the internet's gonna lose its mind. Okay. Pull out a tray here. So, what do we got here? We've got. The replacement panels, as you can see right there, they've got gold and silver in here because these panels are meant to be able to be popped off and you can replace it with a different one, different style. They sent me that other box that has my name like imprinted on them. They sent it to like all the tech YouTubers, uh, which is pretty neat. But I guess the idea there is to show that you can get these customized. I don't know if they sell blanks though. They all say MSI on it. There's a two-way bridge. Can you get a carbon fiber blank it's in here? Or a redone carbon fiber one? I kind of would have liked the carbon fiber with your name on it. With my name on it. No. Yeah. I don't I don't think MSI's branding looks very good. Like Gaming Pro, X299, MSI. I mean, I don't audio know. Audio boost. <laughs> Four. Audio boost. How many PS how much PSI does your audio run? Okay. <laughs> so you got your IO shield cover in the back. Looks like these are RGB. Fan or lighting headers and then antennas. Yes. These all come in a nifty bag. How many people actually keep these bags when they're done? Do you? I'm not yeah. surprised actually. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I felt like that was a silly question once I posed it. So yeah, that's that. Not a whole lot comes in the box for MSI. Can you put that back in the bag real quick. Yeah. Back in the bag. Who else fancies Kung Pao chicken while it's watching this? Oh I love Kung Pao chicken. I love Kung Pao. I like General Sal's chicken too. Rise in for the win. You know, you know my biggest issue I think regarding Ryzen being so good is all the AMD fanboys finally have like a drum to beat on. Mm. And they are beating the shit out of that drum. I wish more people were just tech enthusiasts and actually cared about the tech more than they did about their favorite brand. But I don't think that's ever going to happen because that's that would have to apply to all things in life and that's never going to happen. All right. <laughs> You get your fanboys of everything, down to any hobby. If it's a hobby, you're gonna have fanboys. People are going to, they're just gonna bang and beat the shit out of their drum until everyone's sick and tired of it. True. Keep up the good work, guys. Thank you, sir. Is Thanks. that back centered? Is it centered? Because I know you're like really upset Ain't when it's it. not centered. Okay, there we go. My bad. Hey, Jay, hard work connects did an auto overclocky roundup. Can you do a comparison with Z270? And X299. Um, X299 is going to take some mature. I'll wait until you're done crinkling that. Oh, sorry. I kind of like and hate the sound of electronics crinkling, or bags crinkling at the same time. 
though, sorry. Like, I, no, I like it because it's like, ooh, that means new stuff. But I hate it because it's just like, it's kind of like when you're at the movies and you got that guy that's just like, I want to eat my M&Ms one at a time. And it's like, crinkle, crinkle, or crinkle, crinkle. Like... Chunk. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. And then the guy's like, just sits there with his hand in the bag between bites. So he's just like. <laughs> that's where you just got to pour it out. Like it's that. like, fucking eat your candy already and go. Okay, anyway. I saw, I didn't see the roundup video. I saw that he posted one, but I didn't watch it. Um, X299 is gonna take some time to mature. Just like Ryzen is just now kind of. Looks like anything takes time to mature. Yeah, but the problem is you've got these rushed launches and AMD was a rushed launch. Mm. And now Intel is a rushed launch. And when you get these rushed launches, guess who gets to be the beta testers? Yeah, exactly. The, the consumer becomes <laughs> the beta tester. Yeah. Laptop Move the laptop. It locks the blue. There. Let's see if we do that. Okay. Move laptop. Fine. I'll move the laptop. Show you. Yeah. <laughs> move the laptop. Get a higher stand. Jay, can I get a happy birthday? Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Striker. Um, please talk about sound cards and DAX. June babies for the win. Wait, I'll move this way a little bit. Oh. There we go. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. Is this your first radio? Rodeo. <laughs> Hey, Ken, I'm going to leave it right here just so that it bugs the shit out of you. That's the kind of guy I am. Uh, X420 is better. Russian launches. Let's see. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to see what I can do about the chat. Oh, I forgot. Super chat. Let's do this. Okay, Ray Gun. Ray Gun. Coconut Monkey MVP here. Yes. Need more J's fly open. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was. Um, audio block payback. Oh, ad block payback. Three bucks. Thanks for the good content. Thank you, sir. Andrew Ferris says, J, Bitwit Kyle did a review today on deleted 7740K and got the chip up to 5.3 gigahertz. Are we going to see this kind of room on deleted X299 chips? Um, the Bauer did a very good video deleting a Ryzen chip, mm. which is soldered. Like he showed how you could heat it up, get to a certain temperature and the solder will pop off and then shows that it's possible. He also highly does not recommend delitting X299 chips. I'm not gonna delit it. And the only reason Kyle even did a delitted review was because Gigabyte gave him the chip, which was already delitted. So mm -hmm. he had no choice but to go with it. So I think that was just one of the things he's like, well, I got it, might as well go with it. I have no plans to do delitting videos. Um, Jonathan Green says for everyone's favorite monkey, a heart. Thanks, heart. <laughs> the main display port on the Thunderbolt is probably for video over Thunderbolt 3, not to capture things. Um, well, it's Thunderbolt in to the PC, right? So I'm trying to figure out, like, why you would need Thunderbolt coming into your PC if you're not capturing it in some way. Can't you, don't you use that for, like, high-speed external drives or no? Thunderbolt? Or, uh, for Thunderbolt, yeah, but I'm talking about the mini display port. Oh. The mini display port in on the Thunderbolt card is probably for video over Thunderbolt 3, not to capture things. Mm. So, yeah, interesting. I'll have to look into that. I've never played around with a card like that. So, Titan Ti X Maxwell or GTX 1080? The Titan X was like marginally faster than the 1080, but the 1080 is way cooler quieter and more power efficient. So I would go with the 1080. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks for making cool videos. Scar Scarcher Gaming. Thank you. Okay. So what if I do this then? What if I do like that? That's all kind of hard to read. This is a shitty TN panel. Mm. James Fox gives us all kinds of hearts. Um, think different slot thickness for video cards on SLI bridge adapter. Well, they, it wasn't yeah, I mean, it wasn't spaced the same. That's pretty typical. They'll usually yeah. space card one and two out farther apart. And then two and three were together. Two and, and three were was... sandwiched. Yeah. There was no four. There's no four-way four SLI bridge in either of those boxes. Oh. Which CPUs do you have? Oh, my God. I don't have that much time. <laughs> M.2 slot is under heat sink. Yeah, I thought that there was one. I have to look at it. Hi, Jays. I'm a huge fan. I have learned so much from you. You're welcome, but it's scrolled away. I'm sorry. Can I SLI to different brands of 1080? Absolutely, as long as you get ones that... Uh, okay, so here's the problem with like some of the 1080s, right? 
If you get like a founder's card mm -hmm. and you want to SLI the 1080 Ti or 1080 with a non-founder's card, let's say it's taller, they're not going to line up. Mm -hmm. And to get the full benefit of SLI, you have to use the HB bridge, which is a rigid bridge. So they're not going to meet up. They're going to match. Gotcha. So you'd have to use like two flex bridges, which is better than not. But I would just recommend trying to get the same card if you can. Poseidon versus Lightning versus Kingpin. I don't have a Kingpin. You don't have a Lightning, right? You have an Arctic Storm. I don't have a Lightning either. But I have an Arctic Storm, which is the Zotac Amp Extreme on water, essentially. Um, the Poseidon, so far, I mean, that's the fastest card I've reviewed yet. In terms of, I mean, it could, it's probably hand-picked. Mm. Let's just say that. It's probably hand-picked. But um, I would love to get my hands on another Poseidon, even temporarily, just to see, like, through retail oh, okay. to see if it's the same level of overclocking ability. Be, I mean, it came to me like a sealed box. It was completely sealed up, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't look like it had signs of it ever being used. Like, right, you, you'll no, it looked brand new. It did. It yeah, looked I mean, like a retail package. It didn't look like it had ever been used in any way. I open up the XM MSI X99 and I get this sheet, right? Mm -hmm. And this one doesn't have it, but the other one we had, especially with their GPUs, will actually show like product tested, the name of the guy that tested it, which benchmark he tested it with. Like they're verifying that the damn thing works before they send it. Yeah. But that also tells me that they know how well it's gonna perform. So how do I know they didn't just grab one that performs really well and go here, give him this one, cause it's gonna look really good on video. Uh, okay. Yeah. But it happens every time because the silicon lottery is still in effect. So I'll do a review um, of card that's retail or sent by manufacturer or whatever. And then someone inevitably will email me and be like, you're full of shit, mine didn't go as far. And it's like, you're, there's no guarantees in overclocking. You're guaranteed the speed the box says, and that's it. Mm. Nick or Jay, recommendations for car speakers, amps, head units, and subs? Uh, head units? I'm too just, far removed from that. Just scene. one with Bluetooth. I have, I have a subwoofer for having to put in. Rockford Fosgate. Yeah. I don't know, Rockford Fosgate was like the shit back when I was doing, but I haven't, I haven't actually been, I used to work in car audio, but I haven't been in that scene since 2001. So um. that's really far removed. Like we used to build our, our DB drag competition systems with Memphis Audio. Memphis Audio back then, Memphis Audio back then was like a higher mid-range tier, mm -hmm. but I don't think they stayed there. Like Eclipse was like top of the line decks back then, but I don't think Eclipse still has the same prestige that it did back then. Gotcha. So I have no idea who's like the who is a who, who of who now, you know? Mm -hmm. JL Audio was like cheap back then, but now I hear JL's like good stuff. So I don't know. Did you block the ceiling windows? Not yet. Nope. We actually have a guy coming in this week. Um, it was actually requested by Jonathan Morrison, because he's got several units in this building too, that they're getting, they're getting quotes for motorized shutters mm. up there so that we can, use, we can shut them when we want them shut and open them when we want them. There's times the skylight is great, but there's times it just wrecks what we're trying to do. See how it feels when you try and read this? Yeah. It's impossible, right? Hold on. Oh, wait, why is it? Ah, there we go. What is the next trip trade show? P.S. Keep up good work. The next trade show we go to probably won't be until like, and it's not even a trade show, but it'll probably be PDX this fall. Sweet. Next actual like official trade show would be CES. Jay, what would you choose? An i7-2600 or an FX-6300? I would suggest saving your money and buying something newer, honestly. If you're trying to scroll so that we can read every single one, you're insane. No. Because that's what it looks like you're trying to do. It's going through like... Okay, which mainboard manufacturer has the best utility software like Asus Probe or MSI Gaming App, Command Center, Xboost? Um, MSI's software is a bit bloaty. Like you have to install three pieces of software to get it all to work. Mm. I think Asus has a really good suite, especially with like the, um, the, what do they call it? The, the fat, the five Asus suite five or whatever it's on the box. I can't remember exactly what they call it, but it's got the auto overclocking feature. It's got the fan curve, fan control built into it. I feel like Asus gives you the most for your money. Mm -hmm in terms of like the expansion cards it comes with the like you saw the thunderbolt card it also came with the fan extender card lots of really cool things 
building a custom loop with a single 1080 Ti. Should I use a reference card or is there one you would recommend? Um, see, my answer on that has changed over the years because back, like even th like three years ago, companies like EK and Bits Power and all of them, they didn't make blocks for the custom cards. They only made them for the reference cards. But now that they make blocks for the custom cards, like the Strix card and stuff, mm -hmm. I say, look at the reviews, pick the card you like the most based on aesthetics and features, and then if it has a block available for it, get that card. Gotcha. Otherwise, if you want to save a little money, I like how you're like, gotcha, like I'm talking to yeah. you. Yeah, and I was like, eh. He's, I'm he's learning still learning all this too, so he's like, where's your little notebook? It looks like a Game Boy. He has a notepad that looks That's like a, a Game Boy. Pad. I gave you that, didn't I? Yeah, it's yeah. just a bunch of sticky notes. Um, so anyway, he uh, he's still learning, but the uh, the most aftermarket cards now are getting good support with uh, with with blocks. Mm -hmm. So you could typically on water take a card that's with better power delivery, better you know board design, and get better performance on water than a reference now. Uh -huh. Back in the day, reference cards on water were beating the custom cards because custom cards didn't have blocks available. But that's all changed. The game has changed. The Thunderbolt oh. three connector can do video and data without the mini DP in the card. Has no video source. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that's right. -click. I don't want to right click. 3000 RAM Trident ZRGB because instability causes instability with 7700K. 4.8 at 2.8 volts when, damn, that's a lot. Uh, with an XMP is activated, causes Wildlands to crash. Asus Maximus 9 Hero. That sounds more like a statement, but try dialing your RAM back to 2666. Fun fact that's where I run my memory on everything. Mm. Even when I have memory that's like, 3200 megahertz. I run it at 2666 because anything over 2333 is still an overclock. So it gets unstable? No, uh -huh. it's just every piece of software is going to access hardware in some different way. It has That's to do right. with APIs and it has to do with just a lot of different factors. It doesn't mean that you're going to be able to run even XMP profile without any issues. It's still an overclock. Uh -huh. XMP stands for Extreme Memory Profile. I don't know if you know that. Okay, I okay. get it now. So the speeds you see on these boxes are XMP profile, which is why if you take like any stick of RAM, even if it's even if it's the new ones that are like 4,000 megahertz, and you stick it in an X99 system, X299, uh, we're not talking about any of that yet. So just X, X99 or even a Z170 or Z270, you put that RAM in there, it's going to load 2333. Okay. okay. Or 2133. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. 2133. So that's what it's going to run at. That's the base clock for the memory. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, you're welcome. MB67. Current stream excluded. Yeah, this stream is pretty bad. Hey, Jay, love your content. Do you have any of the new X99 CPUs to do review for the channel? P.S. Remember Yellow Skunk Works? Of course I remember Yellow Skunk Works. And I have a 7900X, but it's at home. It arrived after I got to the studio today. How's the aluminum loop doing? Aluminum, aluminum. It's still, it's in the kitchen. It's just <laughs> sitting there. We're just gonna let it sit. <laughs> and then power it back on one day. Yeah. My CPU cooler has push pull, air cooler, and I can't get both fans to spin at the same speed. Will this cause an issue? P.S. You and the coconut monkey are the best. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Um, so your airflow is gonna be more so determined at the slower fan speeds, because the, the fans that's spinning slower become the bottleneck I, I hate that word, but flow. it becomes, yeah, right? So if you have, if the push fans are spinning faster and moving more air than the pull fans, is if there was no pressure drop across the radiator, then the slower fans trying to push air into it are going to be restrictive to the fans with higher flow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. air in is not equaling air out. Air out is less than air in, which is going to create a pressure barrier here. But you have pressure drop across the radiator. So my recommendation would be to put the slower fans on the pull side and the faster fans on the push, push side, and that should help balance out some of the pressure. But it ideally would still be to run at least matched RPM fans for the sake of noise, because you could also get some choppiness sound if mm -hmm. you have two different speed uh, fans. Like, perfect way to, to, to explain that is take two of the same fan, but have one, like have them hooked up to a fan controller or your header or something and slowing down, put one at like 60% and one at like 100%, and then stick them against each other blowing the same direction, you'll hear like a bunch of turbulent chopping and whooshing sounds I'm because the fans are not, they're not turning at the same rate or moving the same airflow. You bought a 1080 Ti Founders and while playing Overwatch, it's at 83C. Should I lower the power 
while I wait for an AIO kit. That's, not that's exactly what it's, it's no, that's exactly where it's oh. set to run. Gotcha. That's exactly where Founders Card is set to run out of the box. Don't lower the don't lower the power. Just up your fan curve. Speed up your fans a little bit. You're gonna you have a Founders Card. You're gonna deal with noise anyway. So speed it up and get the temps down. And you'll have better boost clock control too. Let's go. I already answered that one. Here. What was that last one right there? Uh, this one. No, the green one. Oh, do you think we'll be seeing MATX XT99 boards? I'm pretty sure there will be. There, there's always been. I doubt we'll see any ITX stuff though. You just you you sacrifice too many of the features that are intended on that platform when you go with like ITX form factor. Was it? I was well, like on the KB Lake stuff, the previous gen. It was more like the AT. Uh, you could find the wireless adapters on most of the smaller ones. You couldn't find it on. The big ones, like the only one I found, it was like the AC spoon the board the, I just picked up. The reason for that, though, is the smaller the form factor, the more portable the idea behind the form factor See, is. They want to have right. Wi-Fi. Um, brands like MSI and ASUS tend to include wireless AC on like even the full ATX motherboards. Mm. But no, you're right though. That's why all mini ITX boards. There's another reason why mini ITX boards usually have built on. I'm curious if you can figure this one out. Okay. Mini ITX. Motherboards okay. typically have uh, wireless built in, and they'll they'll use like an M SATA plug. Okay, which if is it's not it almost looks like M dot two, but it's M SATA. Oh, okay. okay. And they will use wireless through that. Can you can you tell me why? Mm -mm. I'm sure that somebody in the audience <laughs> knows. I know they know the answer to this question. Why do they include M SATA wireless on pretty much all ITX boards? And so uh, someone educate him for me. So they could keep a small form factor. There's a very specific hardware reason for this. The is chat it, is absolutely absurd. Welcome to the internet. Is it to not put so much intensity on the nope. CPU? Oh. Nope. I want, I'm waiting to see if the answer shows up. Somebody's got to know this. Nobody knows? Or maybe they're just way behind on the chat. Like maybe chat's way behind. Hey, you guys. Somebody's got to know. It's transfer speed? Nope, that's not it. Whoa, oh my God. PCI slot numbers. There's only one PCI slot. PCIe slot. So if you put a graphics card in there, how are you going to plug in like a PCIe wireless card? Magic. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> no, not PCI lanes, PCIe slots. There's a difference. But yeah, so that's why. And all MFT exports are just one slot. Mm. So you can't put a graphics card in there. No, I mean, technically, if you were running something on mainstream and it had an iGPU, mm -hmm. like an internal GPU, in the, in, then maybe you could have put, but it's going to have an ex, it's going to have an MC to wireless anyway. I don't think I've ever personally had like seen or felt or touched an MITX board that didn't have wireless on MC to. Only goats here. Meh. <laughs> Meh. We should just put a ten hour a ten hour video Loop. of goats that sound the, like people. The screaming goats. Goats screaming like people. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Hey Jay, thanks to you, I have my first cooling loop. <laughs> thanks to me, you mean due to me? <laughs> I, I've cost you money. Okay, let's see here. Quiz. I have my fan speed at thirty eight percent, and my graphics card is at thirty six degrees Celsius. Which graphics card do you have? Uh, I'm going to guess a hybrid card because the fan speed will still be there because the fan controls cooling for the power delivery and memory, mm. but the GPU is being cooled by water, which is why it's only at 36 C. So I'm going to say it's a hybrid card, but which one? I don't know. It could be an EVGA hybrid. It could be an MSI hybrid, but it's, um, it's a hybrid card. I'm pretty sure. It's mini PCIe. <laughs> Who uses wireless anyways got a hard i use wireless at least at home i have only one computer hardwired um i have godzilla goat video <laughs> what That's the thing jay can you review the msi geforce 1070 itx um they actually asked me if i wanted to review it i turned it down if i reviewed every graphics card that like was was Came requested in. You'd Both have... by either the audience or the manufacturer, this would be nothing but the GPU channel. <laughs> and you'd have like a mind by now. 
I could have a mine now, but I don't want a mine. <laughs> I don't want to have to mine for two years before I make any money, and then in that two years, everything crashes, and guess what? All I do is spend electricity bills. Mm. It's not MSA, it's mini PCIe. You're right, fine, you're right. Jay, do you have any thoughts about Coffee Lake? Nope, because it's all rumor-based, and I don't talk about rumors. Jay, what is going to be the best processor for SLI gaming? Probably still like a 7700K. Not to be confused with the 7740X. Jay, can I use DDR3 RAM with the i7? Yes, you can if the mm -hmm. board supports it. Okay. The 7700 like, board? KB Lake does support DDR3 and DDR4. Oh. Most of the motherboard manufacturers made DDR4 boards only. Mm. Very, very rarely you can find a DDR3 board. Gotcha. Not sure why anyone would want to do that, though. I think that started with Skylake, actually. How do I feel about the RX 470 480? Uh, watch my reviews. <laughs> I reviewed both of them. I reviewed the 460, 470, and 480. And then I reviewed the 580 this time around, not the 470. We have it up there, but haven't reviewed it. Lower the desk, you monkeys. Here, raise it really high. Right, stop right there. There. Oh, I was gonna like make it so the laptop just covers our face. Well, if you go too high, all we're gonna see is our crotch. See, why are you doing that? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Ta da! What's up? I have to zip my fly back up now. <laughs> so, watch how high you went with it. Now, this is oh, weird geez. looking. Now, this is weird looking. Look what you did. You gotta go like really low with it now. Is that as low as it'll go? <laughs> yeah. I feel all... Tonight... Oh, I can go lower. On the news. It's staying there. It's because it's, it's, it's squishing my legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Now I can't read this. How long will my 47 90 See, look how high you put it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how long will my 4790K perform still be considered high-end for gaming, and when should I replace it? My answer is the same. Every time somebody asks me this question, it's time to replace your CPU when it can't do the tasks you want it to and the speed at which you want them to do it. I learned that real quick. All right. It looks like we're just sitting here now with a floating uh, laptop. X360 EK kit right on top. Fans above the intake. Front fans intake. Rear fan exhaust. DB Pro 900 OC 6700 kit. Feels high. Any thoughts? Wait. CPU creeps to low 70s? Check thermal paste? No. Low oh. 70s is going to be fine on that CPU. Remember that TJ Maxx on that CPU is 105. So you're, three, you're 35C below TJ Maxx for that CPU. You're OC'd on a 6700K. Water does not necessarily mean that like... Okay. So water, the longer that you have the system running, mm -hmm. it's still going to get warm. It just takes longer to get there. Gotcha. Okay. For long gaming sessions or long... Um, Testing sessions, benchmarks, whatever. Can we raise it up like another yeah. six inches? <laughs> I'm like slouching over too much. Right here. The temps will still get up there, but your case has everything to do with it. Now, I'm actually going to be talking about case, about, about cases and water cooling, which is why I'm not using the 1800X. Uh, okay. Because I've already, already talked yeah. to you about why we're not using that PC. So I would look out for that video. It might give you some insight as to why that's happening. Do you know why you can't pre-order the new i9-7900X processor on Amazon? Does Newegg have the same exclusive? Does Amazon. Newegg have some exclusive? I don't work for Amazon, how would I know? No idea, man. Outgoing components, as a good... Or am I just throwing my money away? Which is... Uh, depends on what outgoing components they are. I mean, if you ask me if is it, is it worth buying a 6700K, I would give you a different answer than if you asked me if it's worth buying a 6300FX. Mm -hmm. Both are outgoing hardware. So I'm using 2.1080 right now. Is it worth upgrading to 2.1080 Ti's? Uh, okay, Steve the Gamer. I kind of feel like that question is sort of like me going, you know, my car can go 160 miles an hour right now. <laughs> if I trade in my car and get this car, I can go 175. Is it worth it? How much, well, what kind of car is it? And how much money are you Does adding? Does it matter if the point is speed? Yes. No, I want, I want speed on a budget. 
I'm kidding. Okay. I made him face palm, guys. So, no, um, I mean, that's a really silly question to ask. I, I feel like it's a silly question. Because you didn't tell me what resolution you're gaming at, which games you're playing. I mean, if, if he comes back and says 144 hertz, 1080p, I'm going to say there's no, no. point. Because yeah. you're already going to max out the 144 in most games, if not all games, with two 1080s, especially if you overclock the 1080s a little bit. If he comes back and says he has any 60 hertz panel, then I just want to be like, <laughs> keep your cards and buy a monitor. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's my brutal but honest question or answer for you, Steve. At least you, you gave him alternatives. If he says he has a 60 hertz monitor, I would say sell both of the 1080s. <laughs> Get a... Or even buy, or even sell one 1080 and buy a monitor. Honestly. Well, it took me forever to go up to 1080p, 144 hertz. When you had your 900p monitor? <laughs> I have 1600 by 900? Yeah. <laughs> and then it's 720p TV. He used to game, well guys, when I met him, <laughs> and he built, or he bought his first computer, which was iBuyPower, by the way. My bad. Um, yeah, he was gaming on a 720p TV. What do you, what do you game on now? I have a 1080p 144 hertz I bought from you, the Asus uh, VG24 QBE. QBE? What is that? Was that the mark? Oh my god. VG248 QE. QE, yeah. Okay. QBE. QBE. I thought it was a QBE. Too bad. <laughs> and then you also have the LG uh, UC87C. I don't game on that unless it's like Project Cars. Yeah, because it's only 60 hertz, but it's IPS and it's for content creation anyway. Yeah. Hello from Greece. Sup? Hi. Would a 7600K be enough for 1080 Ti? Um, okay, so I did a video, 7700 versus 7500, oh wait, 7600 versus 7350K. And there is indeed, with high-end GPUs, some loss of frames per second when you go from an i7 to an i5. Mm -hmm. But again, that depends entirely on the game. Game, we're in an era now where developers are starting to use multi-threading where they can and where it makes sense. For the longest time, games, like for the most part, just didn't use more than four cores, period. Hyper-threading was sitting there idle. They just bounced around between four cores, and it didn't matter. You could say i5 and a7, or a7, i7 had very similar performance, but that's kind of changing now. You know, I think this year is the first year I'm actually going to build my own computer. Without any help from me? Yeah. I'm proud of you. I know, right? Um, this debate versus X299 and Threadripper. Like, I have a friend. You guys you guys know the owner of Red Mist, right? He's talking about updating again. He just updated last year. X99. Let me call him. And tell him right? what Right? But doing. now he's like, he texted me this morning. Sorry, I'm throwing you under the bus. You know who you are. But he was like, <laughs> look. Decided. I'm going to upgrade to X299 and sell my current stuff. So what's my answer? Why? <laughs> He's all, to be honest, I want a fancier motherboard. Fancier motherboard? Dude, there are fancy motherboards on the X99. And then his response to that is, well, unless Threadripper is the latest, hottest thing. So here's the problem. It's going to be really hot because it's <laughs> two cores put together. <laughs> I've trained you well. <laughs> it's going to be really hot. Savage. So hot. Um, <laughs> there's always going to be some later, hotter thing coming out. You got to, like, just... I don't know. I see it as play with. Like we're the... gonna have Thread Blazer, which is four of them together. I don't know. Oh my! Could you God. imagine the die is like <laughs> the size of an iPad? Yeah. <laughs> you can't miss when you put that in the socket. Like it's so big, you'll just be like. Do you letting KB Lake X worth it? Yes, but I recommend you taking a hammer to it. Do you let it by hammering it? <laughs> Using 4K TV on Content Creator plus rendering. If your four, if your four, if your four K TV is set to four 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 color gamut, then sure, or whatever. The problem is a lot of four K TVs when you hook them up will only go four two zero. Mm. Is this the first year Jay works on a card with you? We worked on cars together. I don't know about what do you mean by card. Flies on your head. No, they're not. <laughs> Are you excited for Threadripper? I'm not. I don't get excited for rumors. I get. I get excited for the ideas of things. Um, uh, I feel like AMD is in a position right now where they get to kind of just like chill out for a sec, because 
Intel went full AMD with this launch. Like they just they traded places. Oh, man, they have literally just foobarred this whole launch. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you don't get CPUs to reviewers until four hours after the embargo date, when you're in communication with them in the middle of May. I was in communication with them in the middle of May regarding expected delivery times on this. And the problem was they went dark. They went dark too. Uh, a lot of us reviewers were kind of chatting amongst ourselves like, hey, is Intel talking to you? Because they're not talking to me. And it's like, no, they're not answering me either. Like no one's answering. So we, a lot of us were just left like, yay, we got motherboards. And now Intel has just like gone dark, like completely off the grid in terms of communication. We have no cake. And, and still, they didn't communicate to me that CPUs were on the way. I got the shipping notification. Oh. Uh -huh. Like, I got the shipper carrier notification. So. These are so frustrating. I got a 6800K at 4 gigahertz, but I'm running a 1080 Ti. Is my processor bottlenecked by chance? If so, 6800K is a X99 CPU, just so you know. Mm -hmm. No, you're not bottlenecked. People are terrified of this concept of bottlenecking. Why? Why is everyone so afraid of bottlenecking? Unless you're running some like really old shit or like an i3. Or like a big turbo on stock internals. You're not gonna be, no, cause you can still run a big turbo until the shit blows up. The, po the moment you put this together, you're bottlenecked the moment you start. But the point is everyone is so freaking terrified of this concept of bottlenecking. And it's, it's irritating because it's like, we make, we make, we spend so many hours per video, especially the stuff that talk about showing performance reviews, mm -hmm. proving to you that you're not bottlenecking yourself unless you have this just gross mismatched hardware, grossly mismatched hardware. Like an X58. Like I'm going to get a 1080 Ti and I'm going to get an A10 APU from AMD. Oh. Yeah. You're bottlenecked at that point. You get an i3, you're bottlenecked. You get an i5, you're slowing down a little bit, but you're not bottlenecked. You are, you are not getting the full performance of your 1080 Ti, but you are getting great performance. Like bottlenecking will be when your CPU goes to 100% usage to try and keep up with the frames the graphics card is sending to it. Mm -hmm. The graphics card is handling all of the video processing and it's telling the CPU like, hey, this is what we got and make it happen on the game. And then the, game, the CPU is basically like, hold on, hold, wait, hold on, I'm not ready. And the GPU is sitting here like, doo, 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 doo. so GPU and usage goes down, just keeps piling up. GPU usage goes down, CPU usage goes up. That's a bottleneck. Mm -hmm. But when the CPU usage is sitting around 80, 75, 60, and it's bouncing around, and your GPU usage is still at 99, you're not bottlenecked. Things are fine. <laughs> okay, huge fan. Just wanted to express my gratitude for all the work you put in this channel. Thanks for your content. I was inspired to complete my first liquid cooled build. You're awesome, Jay. Thank you, sir. What about him? He's awesome. Ish. Ish. <laughs> I, have my, I have my moments. I can't click that. There we go. New MOBO, Ryzen and RAM, GPU is 8G. Wait, is 8G outgoing? Build under 600. Oh, he's talking about probably 8 gigs of RAM. Uh -huh. um, would it be a decent build to consider instead of waiting for the new, for new 580? I don't understand the question. James, I feel like you didn't give me enough info. New MOBO, Ryzen and RAM, GPU is 8G. I don't understand. No crew. I think my 6700K at seven gigahertz on LM2 is bottlenecking my 9500 GT. It might be. <laughs> Just uh, a little bit, man. GT stands for fast. Excuse my ignorance, Jay. I have an AMD FX8320. We just did videos on that. Mm -hmm. Is Ryzen a practical upgrade path? Absolutely. I'm willing to spend around 350. Get yourself like a 1500 or something like around that range and a motherboard combo from Newegg or something if you can, or NCIX, wherever you live. And I guarantee you, you are going to see a mass improvement. Even with a four core with what they call their si SM si simultaneous, multi simultaneous multi-threading, mm. SMT, because they can't call it hyper-threading. That's Intel coined, right? Yeah. Or actually, I think it's, I think it's uh, um, trademarked. But anyway, I guarantee you are going to see a massive improvement because of the I IPC or instruction per clock improvement with Ryzen over the 8320. Mm. Do we need to do that? Upgrade your sister's computer? I'm gonna probably upgrade it anyway because of the like shutting down issue it was doing. Yeah. But 
I think we need to do that. I think we need to take 8320, which is an eight core. Technically it's four core modules or two cores per module, but they have shared L2 cache, which is why it like, people are like, no, it's a four core. No, it's an eight core. Well, uh, it's cause it's not a true eight core. It's not, I mean, they're eight physical cores, but they're kind of like sharing cache. Uh, um, I feel like we need to take like a 1500, which is a four core eight thread. And then we need to take an 8320 or an 8350 and compare the two. What I really wanted was uh, was Ryzen 3 to come out. I wanted the Ryzen 3 four core, no SMT, just four cores to come out so we could compare that to i5. Mm. We've got 2500K at 4.7, 1080Ti and a 4K 60 hertz monitor and no bottleneck. That's because your GPU is on 4K, right? If you, take your, if you put it on 1080p, then he would be bottlenecking his 2500K. But at 4K, his 1080Ti is taking on all the load. So the 1080Ti isn't able to send this massive buffer of frames to the CPU to handle. Mm -hmm. the G it's balanced. Gotcha. Adblock monies. Also, <laughs> thanks for costing me 400 pounds in water cooling parts. Is it pounds? I think it's pounds. That could be pounds. It, it could be uh, British pounds. It could also be Euro. They're like the same symbol. Euro is more of an E, like a C with the two line. It's going through it. Is it? So it looks like an E. I don't know. Oh. All I know is the Amazon um, payments I get from the UK have that symbol. So it's pounds. Could be. Do I look European? Well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. to rephrase that question. <laughs> but if I stop talking like this, yeah. no. It's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, hello guys, let's do this now. Let's talk about the computers. <laughs> talk about the computers. I have a 360 red, 1700X, uh, 1080 Ti on water, added 240. Temps went up, CPU running 45 idle, 55 on load. GPU 25, 27 idle, 40 load. I'm not sure if I put together the CPU water blocking correct. Let me know any solution. Uh, you might have a pump. You might have a pump issue. Your water flow might be way too low. It also depends on the layout of your of your loop. It also depends on what case you're using. Perfect example. You got a 360 and a 240 over there, right? Yep. I'm gonna, like I said, we're, as soon as I'm done with the stream here, which is going to be about 10 minutes, I'm going to shoot a video about when water cooling goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because of a simple oversight on my part, hours and hours and hours of work went to waste. We have to take pictures before we disassemble it. I actually don't think I want to disassemble it. I actually just kind of feel like I want to take that shit to a machine shop and be like, make a big ass hole in this. <laughs> Fair enough. Jay, I really appreciate the content and bottlenecking. I really appreciate the content and bottlenecking to agree is a myth. Like Jay said, if it's not 100% usage on your CPU, you're not bottlenecked. If your CPU is six years old, it might be time to upgrade. If you're unhappy. I've always said it before, you can game on a potato if you're okay with potato frame rates. Right? Yep. Same thing with the editing on a potato. If you're okay with it taking four hours to render a video, then it's not time to upgrade. If you're like, I am not gonna sit here and wait four hours for this to render, then, then it's time, time for an upgrade. upgrade. Yeah. Who cares? Forgot my question, so hi. Hi. 5820K with the 1080 Ti and 1080p. My GTA 5 gets below 60 FPS on max settings. What's up? Huh? 5820K. That's the same CPU that yeah. you have. With a 1080 Ti and at 1080p, my GTA 5 gets below 60 FPS on max settings. What's up? I don't know. There's lots of settings in GTA 5. You could have the draw distance really high. You could have the, the long shadows way too high. You could have... Motion blur. There could be lots of issues on there. Now, motion blur, believe it or not, doesn't add too much mm. to the GPU load. I mean, it, it does have to blur out the image as it's moving, but you're also dealing with a massive world. So if he's got draw distance maxed, if he's got shadows maxed, and he's got density maxed, mm, yeah. all those buildings and all those people and all those cars, the CPU has to render all of that. So what's actually slowing down may not be your GPU, it might be your CPU. Now, he's got 12 cores. Or 12 threads of performance with a 5820K. But if he's still running stock speeds, I bet you if he overclocked that to 4K, or 4K, 4, 4 gigs, gigs, he would see a pretty significant improvement. What's the most worth it? I, wait, what's the most worth it X series CPU coming for a 4770K Haswell CPU? Which X series? X299? X99? No idea. Thanks for the donation, little saint. Little Saint was just like, here, I have 10 Canadian. Yeah. Boom. Much love from the San Francisco Bay Area for you guys. Any advice for a new YouTuber like myself? Consistency. Consistency is everything. G Google algorithm prefers consistency over anything else. 
So as long as you're uploading every other every few days on a regular basis, then you stay up there in the search rankings. If you mm. like to shotgun out a bunch of videos and then you disappear for two months and then you shotgun out some more and then you disappear, that's that's bad. That's that's that hurts you when yeah. it comes to YouTube. Uh, that's the Euro symbol. Yeah. Okay. Well, they both look like an E. <laughs> and on Enum. Thanks for the donation. Oh. Yeah, I really appreciate the content. Oh, we already okay, read, read that. Yeah. We read that one too. Yeah, we read all those. Okay. Cool. Wow, you guys are on fire with the donations today. Sheesh. It all goes to help pay his salary. Thanks. And the studio. <laughs> Coco Monkey. I, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Did, when did you put the grass plant on the table? I just noticed it. Mm -hmm. We had to get rid of the IKEA plant that everyone copies. So we uh, we took out the little bamboo tree thing. Where did it go? Oh, it's right here next to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's kind of off screen. Um, and uh, we got that grass plant actually at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> the reason why I asked you for the picture of that table. Mm -hmm. Okay, when, when Nick and I were putting together the second set over there, we were uh, we went to IKEA, of course. But we weren't going there necessarily to buy like a computer desk. We were going to buy a table, like a, like a dining room table. Okay. What do you mean? Oh, okay. You were there. I'm telling the audience. Yes. <laughs> I thought you were telling me when you went with uh, your wife. No, if you were listening, I said you and I, when we were building the second set, we went to Ikea. We did. <laughs> okay. I had you send me the picture yesterday of that black picnic table looking dining room table. Because I'm really glad we didn't buy that one. Because Jonathan just did another Dream Desk setup. And, and he one. used that table. Oh. <laughs> That's the problem. I'm, no, I'm not shopping at Ikea no more. So I swear to God, every YouTuber in this area is like, we got to do something. We're going to Ikea. <laughs> I'm going to Ikea. No, from now on, I'm going to Living Spaces. I'm going to Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to thrift stores. Thrift stores. If you want something like Garage weather, sales weathered now. looking. Yeah. All right. Scroll down. Look at you stopping at all the ones that say Coconut Monkey. I know, right? Jeez. Oh, wait. That's racist. You can't call him Coconut Monkey. Yes, he can. That's why I named myself. Oh, well, he was totally not listening. I know, he never listens. <laughs> this is what I deal with every day. You guys fight like the perfect couple. <laughs> <laughs> I like how I'm telling a story to them and you're like, okay, yeah. That's right. <laughs> like, I'm telling you the story about when you were there. I know, I want to hear your end of it. <laughs> Do you really want to hear my, my side? Off the camera, maybe. Do you guys know how many sentences he starts with, hey, what if we, and it ends with me like this? <laughs> it's literally like Lego Batman, where you have like all the good ideas, and yeah. then I finally get like one. <laughs> so when I had said in the video we did with the ghetto cooling ideas, <clears throat> um, you had the idea of like, well, what if we put like screen material on here to keep like debris and stuff from getting in? Yeah. And I was like, in, in, in the edit too, I was like, Coconut Monkey had a really good idea. And you're like, look, I had an idea. And I went, we could fix that. And I like yeah. edited out those sentences right there. It's like, uh... So I played it back for him and it was like, something else you could do is take some screen material. And you were just like, oh. <laughs> but then someone else had a really good idea that like dwarf or trumped yours. Which was? It trumped. Um, it trumped. You had to sign it and show everybody. <laughs> um, no, he was like, well, just go to the Home Depot and get that um, air filter material like an air and filter. cut it. Mm. to match the fan and just stick it against the fan and that will actually block the dust because the screen material is a little bit big for blocking dust that would be for blocking like big pieces of dirt and trash getting blown in but yeah he's still rocking a 3770k at 4.8 gtx 970 i'm running a 240 and a 280 and a 200 dual pumps or dueling pumps are like fighting each other <laughs> um, my temps still range from 15c to 68c why everyone thinks custom ht will always bring sub 50 temps also, too, it depends entirely on the environment. Mm -hmm. Is there a chair you would recommend for someone who's 6'4 for six to eight hours of use a day? Where'd you go? Ooh. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> I just made this font like that big. Hold on. I got this. Okay, that'll work. Oh. <laughs> Is there a chair you would recommend for six to eight hours a day? Keep up the good work. I don't have a lot of experience with chairs. I mean, we use the autonomous chairs up here. We still, you still haven't seen the reviews on those because I'm We're tired. Still wearing of, them in. I'm tired of doing reviews on chairs, and then mm -hmm. after the review is live, like a month later, something breaks on the chair. So we're like long term using these torture testing. But like these chairs have like little things about them I don't like. Like just a random plastic cover will pop off 
or the headrest will just fall down. Oh yeah, those are good. Yeah. You have a 6600K and it's not enough for some of the Photoshop and live streaming I would like to do. Should I go with a 6700K, 7700K, or turn my i5 into an HTPC and go with Ryzen 1700? That's like, you gave me like three very contrasting options, con options here. Um, it sounds like you have to keep the i5 anyway and you want to upgrade. So turn the i5 into a home theater PC if you want. Ryzen 1700, in my opinion, is going to be better for content creation than the 6700 or 7700K. Because mm -hmm. it's 16 threads. No. Um, Xidly Bad Wolf, your 380X will not do 144 hertz 1080p. Jay, in your opinion, save up or wait for Vega specs or save it for 1080 Ti. Keep up. In my opinion, wait, we're not that far. Mm. We're not that far from Vega, uh, no, at least not consumer Vega. Okay, four more minutes and we're gonna end the stream. Jay and Nick, great fan. Is it worth upgrading my 6700K yet? Mostly do gaming at 1440 and a bit of photo editing, running a 1080 Ti, carry on being awesome. I think you're fine with 6700. I agree with that. 1151 is going to drop. Nope. In Unless fact, it's on let, me, let me tell you what happens with hardware as it starts to become obsolete. Is people need particular pieces of hardware to either repair builds or finish builds. Mm. So initially, there will be an increase in, in price. Mm. Because the FX is a perfect example. When we built that system last year with the like uber cheap $500 PC, yeah. the 8320 was $79 on Amazon. Today it's 130 almost Almost double the price. It's like two thirds extra price right now, right? Yeah. Because those aren't being made anymore. The all AMD production, because AMD was still making FX CPUs up until last year when they were prepping for Ryzen. Oh. And now that those are becoming fewer and farther and harder to find, prices are going up on those. So the same thing could potentially happen with 1156 and 1151 and all these other sockets, right? So it's hard to say. It really is. But it's kind of like Sandy Bridge. When, Sandy, when, when Intel had announced that they weren't going to be making Sandy Bridge anymore, mm -hmm. it took like two years for inventory to run out, though. See any benefit? Speak up. Will I see any benefit going from 4790K to 7900X with 1080 SLI, 10, 1080 Ti SLI? I already own the video cards. Um, is there any particular reason why you want to buy a $1,000 CPU when you already have one that's not... Like terrible. He's got. He's on a Devil's Canyon. Forty-seven ninety K. Those are really. That's good stuff. what's in that that little mini ITX water cooled fractal build we did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I. I he, again, he didn't say the resolution he's gaming at. Mm. Resolution's everything when it comes to SLI. Because here's the thing: with most games, when we do our benchmarks now with like ten eighty Ti's and ten eighties and Titan X's and Titan XP's, usually the fourteen forty P and ten eighty P numbers are the same. Uh -huh. And why is that? Because the CPU's bottlenecked with two 1080 Ti's on games that can, can go high refresh rate with things like Battlefield or Rise of the Tomb Raider, stuff like that. Gotcha. What would you, oh, hi, VW and Nissan Lover, I'm assuming. What he said would, lower. Read, lower. It, right, read it verbatim. <laughs> Nissan Lower. What would you recommend for my loop DDC or D5 pump? Right now I have an EK XE240 and PE360 RAD and CPU GPU block from EK. Is the DDC enough? Temps are around 60 for CPU and 50 for GPU. You're not going to see a temperature drop with those pumps. The D5 pump is about flow, but doesn't have as much head pressure as a DDC. A DDC usually has a higher flow rate, but it doesn't, it, or I'm sorry, has a lower flow rate, but it has higher head pressure. Uh -huh. So he could go with like dual DDCs, but I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's necessarily having a pressure issue. But again, there's so many, I, I can't, when people just tell me the components they have for water cooling, I can't tell them what their problem is. It depends on what fans are they using, what case are they using, what um, fan orientation. What are their fan RPMs? What's their ambient temperature? I don't know if I said it. What chassis are they in? We should make like a template, like how, how to ask these questions. Like if... <laughs> I don't think it'll work. <laughs> well, we could try. Blazer, all right, professional success, just saying. But by the way, love your channel. 
I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either. What's the most worth it X299 CPU? The one you don't buy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your videos. It gives me the opportunity to stay current with hardware when I can't afford some of them. Newsflash, we can't afford them either. We're just fortunate that they send them to us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time to go, guys. Um, so that pretty much ends it. Thanks for hanging out with us today. We got videos to shoot. And I accidentally let my daughter's Disneyland pass expire. So I have to run to Disneyland tomorrow to renew it. Otherwise, I could have done it online because I'm stupid. <laughs> Our you passes don't expire on the same day, in my defense. Uh -oh. Ours are stay longer than hers. Um, we're going to go, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Over 3,300 of you. Um, hope you got, I think that's a neat looking live stream. Right? It just looks like our videos. Yeah. It would be nice, though, for us to have a dedicated live stream set up. I think we need like the red. Why don't I, why don't I do it real quick, seats. though, before we get out of here? As I'm going to unhook the camera, and I'm going to give everyone like a little, a little peek. A little peek? What it looks like. You're going to get a sneak peek of what we're doing. Yeah, that's not bad. I just wanted to show everyone what it kind of looks like. Of what the place looks like. What we're doing and what it looks like. <laughs> Can you not? <laughs> this is that. We were streaming on this laptop over here. That's the laptop we're streaming on in case you can't hear him. And then that is... Uh... Great. Oh, we oh, there we go. We need to get a, a plug saver for this, like the thing that attaches to it, so that it doesn't pull out. It's just now moving on this one. That's the 1800 X. X build that you're looking at. So, all right. <laughs> it, it gives like a no signal. They're just getting the no signal right now. Uh, <laughs> it went through no signal, they get no audio too, so I'm sure they're all flipping out, right? Yeah. All right. Time to go. Thanks for watching. Excuse me. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>